Welcome back. I uh, haven't been in the kitchen in a while, like, to make a video. Um, and I miss it because I love to talk about food and I love to make the food that other people have uh, created following some of their recipes and adding a little bit, or not, of my own take on it. So, um, this is basically a food legacy series. So, I want to really talk about not just the recipe, but the person behind the recipe. And um, I was really excited, Christmas morning excited, when I got this new cookbook. And I'm just going to show you the cover of it. It's a simple, not a very thick one. It almost looks like the church cookbook, you know, that we've always grown up with um, circulating local recipes. But this is Chef Supreme. Chef Supreme. Martin Ginsburg. Okay. So Martin or Marty, as he's known, um, was the amazing husband of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. So um, I thought it was perfect timing and I've always been so fascinated and in love with their love story. Um, and so, you know, just kind of keeping that spirit alive, um, knowing that now they're together. Um, and anyway, so I have chosen to do a recipe called Caesar Salad Jane. Now, I don't know what the Jane part means of this recipe, but, um, on the same page, opposite side of the recipe, there's a story that people share, and I love this. This is like true food legacy. Like, you know, these are the recipes that Marty made, and he loved to cook. And um, so people remembering him that way. It also helps me remember RBG because of her husband. So anyway, she did not cook. Otherwise, I might be making a recipe that she made. Not been able to get my hands on that. Um, apparently, Ruth had one cookbook, and it was called the 60-minute cookbook. And there were only seven recipes that she could follow. And the 60-minute cookbook meant, like, as soon as she walked in from work, a long, hard day at work, um, from the time she walked in to the time it sat on the table was no longer than 60 minutes. And she said she only knew how to make seven things. And once she went through the seven, it started back over with number one. So everybody knew Marty was the cook in the family, the chef, Chef Supreme. So this cookbook um, was created by the justice's spouses in memoriam. So, um, so I just think it's a really sweet cookbook filled with, um, letters, uh, from their children, their friends, their colleagues. Um, uh, so it's, it's just really sweet to read some of these. So anyway, so, um, Ruth and Marty, they met when Ruth was 17, Marty was 18, and they met at Cornell. Um, he was a chemistry major, and she was, uh, she majored in government, and um, they got married. They were married for 56 years, uh, happily married, um, but in between Ruth going to law school and she had a two-year break like between college and law school and uh, that's when they got married she got pregnant in the first year and um, when she was you know around the time she was gonna have the baby uh, Ruth's cousin got Marty the Escoffier cookbook tra translated of course and 
I didn't really know much about that cookbook, but now it's in my wish list, right? So, um, so Marty, you know, he basically, I guess when she went into law school, he took, he took on all the child rearing, the cleaning, the housework, and the cooking. And he studied the Escoffier cookbook um, like a textbook. And he started from the beginning and went through learning how to make his, you know, like the mother sauces and the broths and all that and moving on. So he loved to cook. And I think what he loved more is Ruth not cooking because I guess it could get pretty ugly in the kitchen for her. But she had bigger fish to fry. Anyway, um, so Marty, you know, he, uh, he was a tax attorney. I mean, he did his own thing as far as, uh, you know, he was a very educated man. But, you know, he was not like the man behind the woman. He was the man beside her. And he really uh, was such an example uh, what it means to be your spouse's equal. And in the 50s, that like was not common at all. And it's not even necessarily common now. But anyway, um, that's why we pick our partners carefully, right? Um, so I'm gonna do this um, recipe and I am gonna switch it up with something. I'm gonna do something just a little different. But anyway, um, so. Chef Supreme, this recipe is for you, Marty and Ruth. May you be dancing at this moment. Okay, um, so first of all, romaine lettuce, Caesar salad, right? One thing that really helps improve a Caesar salad is if you make your own Caesar dressing. It is so easy. That's like one of the things that I, when I was on a big Caesar salad kick and I first learned how to make a very easy Caesar salad dressing. There's nothing better. And it's simple. It's, it doesn't take a lot of time and it's so much better than the crap that you can buy in the store. So, um, this is a different recipe for the Caesar salad dressing, so I'm anxious to try it. Um, okay, so salad spinner. If you do not have a salad spinner, please. One. Put it in your little Amazon cart. They're twelve dollars, and it helps your lettuce not be full of moisture. Like I've already uh, done a, quite a few spins on this, and I'm still getting water in it. So when I want to eat more salads, it's not always. <laughs> The most enjoyable thing. Um, I kind of am bored with salads, but I know I need to eat more, so I always try to make my salads easy to access and just an interesting salad. So that way I know I'll eat more of them. So I buy the package of the three romaines. Um, I chop them up. First thing I do is I cut them. I don't tear them. I like kind of a fine, thin, cut on my romaine lettuce, right? Then I soak my romaine. See, it's like, it's like that. Nice little bites, little bites, right? Um, so I soak my romaine in water, give it a good rinse. There's all sorts of nasty stuff on it. And then I spin my salad, okay? So set that aside. That will be for later. Okay, glasses. So here are your ingredient list for Caesar salad Jane. Romaine lettuce washed, crisped in the refrigerator and broken into pieces. One egg yolk, four and a half tablespoons of virgin olive oil, one and a half tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, a dash of soy sauce, a dash of Worcestershire, Shire sauce, a dash of Tabasco, fresh cracked pepper, 
a couple of anchovy fillets with a little of the oil mashed, some tiny capers, grated Romano, quite a bit of grated Romano, and croutons. Um, so here's the deal. I'm gonna kind of put this recipe to, I'm gonna put this dressing together, but I'm gonna do a couple things differently. Um, I am going to use a couple of egg yolks because I want more dressing because I want to have several salads, right? So, um, preparation. Start with the egg. Start with the egg yolk and the mashed anchovies and beat everything in with a whisk. Throw in the romaine lettuce pieces and toss. Drop in the croutons and quickly serve. Toss and quickly serve. So, here's the deal. Here's my two egg yolks. They're gonna go in there, okay? And I just need to have my glasses on. I just need to come to terms with it. Um, one egg yolk, four and a half tablespoons of virgin olive oil. Let me get my anchovies. Okay, okay, I don't even wanna hear it, okay? No anchovies. You know what? There's nothing wrong with anchovies. It adds so much flavor. Ugh. Except when the anchovy oil splashes all over you and on your glasses and a little on your mouth. Yeah, that's like when you're opening a can of dog food. Yeah, anyway, that was not part of the plan. So I want to make sure I get all my egg, egg yolk in there. Um, here are the anchovies. Just a little can, and they're kind of, ex I can't tilt it because then I'll have it all over my floor. Um, so I'm going to just pull a couple of them out. It's just, they're just salt. It's like... You eat salmon or lox, right? Kind of the same thing. They do have what looks like hair on them. Um, don't be scared. So I'm going to just mash these up in with my egg yolk with a fork. You can also buy anchovy paste, which that's exactly how I used to, um, that's what I used to do, is just put some squirts of anchovy paste, it's like pureed anchovy, okay? I'm going to put a little bit of the oil in, okay, because we really want to get that anchovy taste, right? So I'm eating this egg yolk. Oh, I've got something in the oven. This is the real treat. This is the little twist I'm gonna do on this salad. Um, it's a surprise. So start the egg yolk and the smash up the anchovies. Did that. Um, so now I need four and a half tablespoons, which I'm gonna do eight, nine, okay? This is how I do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a little more for good luck. Sorry, I'm not, I don't measure you. Feel free to. Okay. Now this is now they're talking dash of this dash of that okay so dash of soy Worcestershire I'm gonna do a little more in the dash because I'm kind of doubling it okay now soy sauce dash of soy sauce I actually use Liquid aminos instead of soy sauce, it's a little bit better for you. 
you know, if I can take a healthy short, a healthy, you know, exchange, I will. So, dash of soy sauce. That's a dash. That's more than a dash. Doubling, remember? Okay. And I'm just, okay, I set this whisk out, but I hate this whisk. You have to get a metal whisk. These rubber coated whisks are like just awful. Ugh, they're cute, but they're awful. Okay, balsamic vinegar, one and a half tablespoons. Two, three, four, five. One thing, um, one thing, um, Ruth said about Marty was like, she said he was the very first man she ever knew who loved the fact that she had a brain and cared about it. He was, uh, you know, she's like, he was his biggest, her biggest, I like cheerleader, you know, that's her biggest advocate. Um, I mean, he really went hard for her to get that uh, position on the su Supreme Court. And thankfully, thankfully, thank God. Thank you. Thank you, Bill Clinton. Of course, Himalayan pink salt, sea salt, whatever you want to use. Okay, it says a dash of Tabasco, optional. You say Tabasco, I say, uh, yeah. But this little bottle, so hard to open, but they're great. Okay. We're going to do a little more than a dash. Because I like. Love Tabasco. Okay. So. It says tiny capers. Oh. All right. Here are my tiny capers, tiny capers. I'm gonna just dump them in here. I'm the, I should be like the sloppy chef here because I, I just spill shit everywhere and I just make a mess. Okay, need my spoon. Okay. Says some tiny capers. I love capers. They are like a little bit salt. So I'm gonna do more than some. Okay, my dressing is done and I'm ready to taste it. Okay. I mean, it's different than other soy or Caesar salad dressings. I think I taste, I think I need just a little more balsamic because I can really taste the liquid aminos a lot. And I think I'm going to put a little more, my family's eating this, so it doesn't matter. I can double dip. Mm. And it's not creamy. I love that. I love that about this dressing. Okay. So. Now, there was something that I did. I baked a cake earlier. I baked a white cake. Uh, added an extra egg, egg white, flour. Um, so it was very light. Um, and I made it just on a, on a real shallow cookie sheet 
and I let those cool and then I cut them into squares and I took a small video of how I did that and cut it up and everything and then I broke apart all of the little squares I added olive oil and some fresh ground violet salt, if you've never heard of it. Violet sea salt. I mean, I don't know. You know, I saw it in the store, I'm like, that sounds fantastic. So I bought it and I use it, you know, like this. I want these to be kind of sweet and salty and I felt like violet would complement the white cake. Anyway. These are called wedding cake croutons, okay? I hate croutons. Um, I'm trying not to eat bread, but I can eat cake. Um, so I broke them apart. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. So these are white, ooh, hot. But they are toasting up like, just like croutons. I did not let them sit out overnight to get stale. Um, so these may crumble a lot, crumble real easy in your salad. So I guess be delicate or you can let them get stale overnight, get hard and then bake them off. That'd probably be a better way to do it. But I did not plan ahead. So. I'm going to assemble my salad. Okay, all right. Okay. I like it when dressing is added, blended, and then given to me if I ever order a salad. Notice I did not say, I was trying to avoid saying, I love a tossed salad. Okay, I'm gonna do three handfuls of romaine. Grated Romano, this is actually, this is actually um, Parmesan and Romano. Super important in a Caesar salad. I mean, I'm not gonna go easy on that, okay? I'd like to have the whole thing. And for good measure, some fresh cracked pepper right on the salad. Okay. And I don't like my salad to be doused and drunk in the salad dressing. I like it just a coating, you know? I mean, if you get into that practice of doing that, it Trust me, it's so much better. And then add more if you want more. You just seriously blend it up, get it all over your salad. Oh, this is gonna be freaking good. Thank you, Marty, and everyone who knew how important food was to him and cooking and, and how important Marty is to roof. Oh yeah. Look at that. I'm not gonna let this romaine go to waste or the uh, Parmesan Romano go to waste. Okay. I'm gonna come over here and get my few of my wedding cake croutons. I'm just so tickled about these. My daughter will be so happy when she comes home and see that I finally made them. How did I come up with this? I heard somewhere along the lines in my lifetime about a restaurant somewhere in the country that did wedding cake croutons and I tucked it away in my brain and now I'm doing it. Okay, here it is. Caesar Salad Jane with whoever's famous wedding cake croutons. Let's try this.
thing. Okay. It didn't break apart. Definitely sweet and salty. Um, I think a little bit of the croutons go a long way. Again, I'm not a, not a crouton fan, but this will let me get that crunch and be able to enjoy my salad a little more. Mm-hmm. I would say that's pretty good. That's a salad I can eat. And I like the dressing. It's not heavy, thick. You know, dairy mayonnaise base, you know. But if you did want to make a quick Caesar salad dressing like the one I learned how to make, like, oh my God, I learned how to make this in like 2000, I remember. Um, anyway, just get your food processor, throw in some mayo, some olive oil, some lemon juice, some anchovy paste, and a lot of Parmesan, or Romano, or Parmesan Romano. Amazon Romano, whatever. Blend it up. There you go. Very easy to do on your own. Okay, well, here it is. Chef Supreme, created by the Justice's Spouses in Memoriam. I think maybe I should read one more thing, okay? Let me find a story to read to. read to you all before you leave. Oh, there's something from Jane. Thoughts on Dad by James Ginsburg. Ooh, that's a big one. That's big and long. That, I'll be here all day. You can order the book, but you have to get it from the Supreme Court archives. So you can't just get it on Amazon. Okay. Let's see. Marty Carr Ferguson. Jane Roberts. As a law student at Georgetown, she is a supreme chef, supreme spouse. So this is a tribute. As a law student at Georgetown and later a practicing lawyer in Washington, D.C., I first knew Marty only as a legend, a beloved law professor and exceptional tax lawyer. During the spouse's luncheons, I discovered Marty the man. Marty entertained us not only with his hot cuisine, but also with his quick wit, funny stories, and twinkling eyes. He generously and quickly shared his recipes. His deep love, affection, and esteem for Ruth were touching. I miss him very much, Jane Roberts. So, man, you had me at sharing recipes because I am all about that. Um, a recipe, I feel like, doesn't really ever belong to anyone. If, I, I think it should just be a mutual love. So, I took this recipe and I added wedding cake croutons and Marty maybe should have kitten over it. I don't know, but he wouldn't care. Anyway, thank you, Ruth. And thank you, Marty, for loving Ruth and giving her the space to do what she needed to do for all women. And little did you know that she often uh, 
did take cases that helped benefit men as well. So before any people were like, she was a man hating, whatever, she loved men, but she believed in equality. And um, so I hope that uh, we will find another Ruth in my lifetime and especially for my daughters, okay? Thank you. Have a beautiful day.